do 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 it's Cam Dork. Hello everyone, this is Cam Dork, and welcome to episode 22 of season 2 of my Buildcraft, where we play Minecraft with the mods Thermal Expansion, Forestry, and Buildcraft installed. So guys, welcome back. It's been a little while, and that's because I've been moving into my new house. In fact, my voice might sound slightly different than it usually does, and that's because I'm super excited to be recording today. Uh, other than that, though, I'm actually in a different room than I was recording in previously. Previously, I was kind of in my in-law's house, actually, and recording. And now I'm in my own house. Yay! That is a really good thing, let me tell you. I love my in-laws, but, uh, well... It's nice having your own house again, right? And I kind of have my own little room set up and everything, and it's kind of empty, so it might sound a little echoey, but that's uh, that might change in a bit. But anyways. Oh, nice Minecraft music. Cool. Um, anyways, uh, you may not be able to hear that that well, but that's okay. So today we're going to be doing base stuff, as we've sort of been doing for the last few episodes, just kind of stuff around the base, uh, as we often do. Um, one of the things we're going to be doing today, we're going to be doing a little bit with bees, but before I kind of get into bees, since we've been doing bees non-stop, um, we're going to be working on this, this item wall I have here, this automatic resource regenerator. Um, recall that this is basically put here to make sure that all these chests are full of specific resources that I use a lot, and they're kind of made to be automatically replenishing, so for example, if I take cobblestone out, it starts to fill up again, right? Cool. Um, you notice that I have these extra blocks just sort of sitting here. That was because from time to time I load up my world and I find that there's actually blocks just kind of spitting out here and on the floor and everything like that. And that's basically because the world load loads and these machines load and start their things going on before they get... Actually, this is a little bit annoying. That's fine. We'll keep the music. Uh, before they get the signal to stop working and in which case an item has already come out into the pipe and then it kind of pops out um this setup looks cool i knew it wasn't the most efficient but i said you know it looks kind of cool let me kind of do some stuff with pipe wires it'll be kind of fun and it was but it's not really the most efficient and i kind of want this area because i want to do something uh, with it a little bit later uh, not this episode but but later so what i want to do is basically move these machines so they're directly next to the chests a la this chest on the bottom, this cobblestone chest. Directly underneath, it has an igneous extruder that's just spitting things to the top. So this will never have cobblestone out because it only it has its own sort of uh, stop that that will stop producing when it uh, it's it's full. So as you see, the chest is full, can't fit any more cobblestone, and then it fills up this little item slot, and then it just sort of stops doing what it's doing. And that's how all thermal expansion machines work. So I'm going to kind of change to that setup. In the meantime, I have to get rid of all these pipes. And we got to get rid of, uh, well, then we got to move these machineries over to here. So we're going to be doing that for the first part of this episode and then uh, work on some bee stuff. Uh, kind of kind of in a similar way, actually. Hmm. But anyways, let me uh, let me just kind of tear, tear down some stuff, play a little demo, as in demolition. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, see you in a second. Okay, back, 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 back I am. And let's uh, let's work first on this first set. Okay, I'm getting some stuff. That's fine. Um, let's just get rid of that. That's cool. Uh, and we actually have, you know what, just, yeah, there you go. Um, so, okay, these first sets of chests here. The bottom one is cobblestone. That's full. That's, that's, that's fine. Uh, the second one is stone, and the third one is stone bricks. Now, we had it set up before where we had one aqueous accumulator there, which we will have again. I think we're going to put that right in here, in the, gr in the ground, because it's fun. Uh, and only because it's fun. That's the only reason. No, just because I'm going to do that. Um, the we'll put the top as the place to put that. We're going to stick a liquid duct here, and then I think what we're going to just do is, we had two igneous extruders, one feeding uh, one chest, and another one feeding a cyclic assembler, but we're just going to do it with one igneous extruder and one cyclic assembler, like so. Hold on. 
let me uh, let me do it this way. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do it this way. I think. Okay. So we will have. Hold on. Uh, hey, wait. Can't this? Is that? Oh, okay. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Huh. So look at that. It's um. This is set. The bottom is set to an orange, which is an item, and it can't accept anything from the liquid duct. That's pretty cool. But it can accept water, of course. Oh, and uh, in order to get this thing to work, we gotta we gotta give it two blocks worth of um, of water. So let's put one here and one here. Cool. There we go. Water. All right. Now it's working, and this should be generating. Oh, we want to actually to generate stone. And in order to do that, we do need a bucket of lava, a bucket of lava, which we have pretty easily over here, which I really like. I like this little automatic lava generator. Uh, works really, actually really comes in handy because it's really a pain to go down and have to get lava. Oh, and I can sh shift right click. Oh crap, no, I can't. No, no, wait, wait, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to take it over here. Let's take it from over here and put it back over here. So anyway, that's how you make a stone. No, okay, uh, it's it's just right click. Yeah, that's it. I couldn't remember whether it's shift right click or right click. Yeah, it's right click. Okay, it's set to make stone. Now the stone is gonna go both up and to the back, actually. So that means that this should be filling up with some stone. Give it a second. Give it a second. Give it a second. Uh, wait, is that more? Yep. Okay, there it is. So it'll it'll fill up every two times. One time it'll go up, and another time it'll go down. Uh, yep, right here. And then I had, if you recall, I had this set up all here. Oh yeah, cool. That's right, I can do that. I, uh, with, with dirt, just because I only need one thing here. Uh, in the schematic, we're going to put it as stone, and the orange bits are going to be going to the back. All right. So that's kind of all I need. Um, I need to hook up these to power, but we'll do that later. All right, so that's cool. That's all done. Nice. That, that should work fine. Um, for sand, glass, and sandstone. Here's going to be a little bit different. I actually need to pause for a second because I need to think about how we're going to set this up, and I'll be right back. Yeah, going to think about it because I'm not going to think with you guys here because, you know, why? Right? Why? Totally. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, okay. Got this. I totally got this. And now what we're going to do again is we're going to have an igneous extruder with all this cobblestone. Uh, we got to take these away. There we go. Um, and I'll need this void pipe. I uh, got a few of them anyways. All right, so this bottom one is sand. We're going to need a pulverizer right next to it. So that's the easiest way to do it is to start from the machine that makes the product that we want it. So it's going to be a pulverizer right next to it. We're going to basically power everything on this side. Um, so over to the... So the back's going to be for power. Uh, to the left is going to be where the sand goes. And then we're going to have to put the byproduct, which would be gravel every now and then, down. And so, like before, we're going to put a... Oh, 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 whoops. That, uh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. We're going to put a void pipe there. That's nice. Good, good, good. There we go. Um, the, this one is actually going to need a powered furnace. So, right here. And we're actually going to have this pulverizer also give some sand up to the furnace, which is going to accept it from below. And then the products are going to go to the left. So nice and easy, right? And then over here, we need a cyclic assembler. This guy will accept products from the right, and he will give it to the left. And his schematic needs to include sand. OK? One for making sand. So what we need here, though, is a pulverizer for making sand right here. The sand needs to go to the left, and we're going to have the byproduct gravel go up to the ceiling. So I'll put a void pipe there. 
And then finally, we need to actually give these some gravel. Um, I'm sorry, some cobblestone. And what we could do is put one here and have like a pipe go this way and that way. But what's going to happen is it's going to actually, if we put, let's let's just do it this way. If we put an igneous extruder here, this can serve to give gravel. I'm sorry, give cobblestone to the pulverizer, and that's going to be perfect. And then we can actually have it go up as well and put a pipe here, and that's no big deal, right? The problem is going to be that once this gets full and this is full, it's just going to spit out cobblestone everywhere. So what we're actually going to need to do is to make it easy, and we have an extra one, we're just going to put another igneous extruder right here. And this one's going to feed the pulverizer over here. So there you go. And this is going to be set up like that. Okay, so this igneous extruder, yeah, this igneous extruder is going to give cobblestone to the left to this pulverizer. Sand is going to go to left and up and gravel down. Uh, sand is going to come up here and give glass to the left. And then um, the second is igneous extruder gives its cobble up. The pulverizer takes the cobble and then turns it into sand, which goes left, and gravel, which goes up, and then gravel sand comes in and gets turned into, yeah, okay, so y you got the idea, okay, and we're going to do the same thing here. Hmm. I never actually used that that, that, that trick, I, I don't know when they implemented it, but it's awesome, <laughs> I never realized it was so awesome. Uh, cool. Cool, so let me actually get buckets of water and such. Uh, we actually only need, well, we need we need two buckets of water and two buckets of uh, lava, actually, to power these igneous extruders. The nice thing about them is that we actually don't need a cyclic assembler. Assemb yeah. yeah, cyclic assembler. I'm sorry, what am I talking about? We don't need an aqueous accumulator for them as well. Okay, this should be enough, and then we just single right click on them, and that'll start the machinery going, kinda. Alright, it'll start things going. Alright, good, good, good. And then we just need to power these machines, and that's pretty easy. We're just gonna do it with these energy conduits. Come on. There we go. Done. Awesome. Uh, and actually, oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. There you go. And that's gonna power them uh, when I run power to this. So, great. All right, now the third and final one is going to be really, really easy because there's snow here. There's ice here. Um, this actually should be pretty simple. I don't think I have to think about this too much. Take that away. Take that away. And we're going to have to have a good position of an aqueous accumulator, which isn't going to be too hard. So let's grab that. Um, all right, so this is actually pretty simple. Glacial precipitator here and here um, and we're just gonna put them like there and then there and then um, I think what will happen is since I need to actually have these guys get water because that's kind of important I guess you know what maybe I'll just put the yeah maybe I'll just put the liquid dikes here yeah why not I, I think that's all right and then we'll put the uh, Ooh, is this gonna get in the way? Am I, am I actually? I don't. I don't know where my uh, redstone is for this. Hmm. Uh, that's gonna be annoying because I'm gonna probably fall into that water all the time. So I don't want it there. Oh, can I put it here? Oh, I can. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right. So I'm gonna put some. Hold on. Let me grab some water. Some more water, I should say. Hmm. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. It's gonna work great. Okay, so water's gonna go there and water's gonna go here. Um, let's fill this up. All right, and then aqueous accumulator right here, right there. Good. And just gonna go to the top. It's gonna go up and fill these guys up. And I'm just gonna do it that way. Um, no, no, wait. Uh, it's going to be filled from the back, right? And then this guy is also going to be filled from the back because we're going to get power from this side. Oops, right there. And I guess we'll just hook up. I mean, I could do it that way, but that's weird looking, right? Uh, I'll figure out how to hook it up to the system later in a, in a making sense way. And really all that's going to happen is it's going to make snow in the bottom one, if I remember right. And then the top one's going to make ice. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, let me actually check that out. Is that is that right? Yes, that's right. All right, so we'll just have the yeah, that's fine. We'll just have the water thing right here. That's no big deal. And the top one, we don't know what we want it to be yet. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a stone brick here just as a placeholder, just to, just for fun, for fun. Yeah, for fun. Okay, uh, all we need to do is hook this up to power, which is going to be over here. Um, although it doesn't have to be, interestingly enough. Uh, it kind of does, because this goes to my um, honeycomb processing, if you recall. So I guess we can just... Uh, I'm going to run the power. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll, I'll run the power. I'll be right back. There we go. All done. Okay, so I set up all the power, just kind of runs right here, and I made this a little more straight and uh, obvious. Uh, randomly placed this block, don't know why, and that'll do it. And one more redstone energy conduit left over. Nice. Um, actually, I think I have a few more left over, but anyways. Uh, so this is, this is working just fine, so there you go. Everything's going just fine. This is actually much, much better now. Now this is much more efficient, and it still will work just fine. This should be slowly... Yep, it's slowly generating glass. That's fine. These don't have to be that quick because, honestly, how how often do I use 27 stacks of glass all at once? Yeah, not very often. All right, so cool. That is project number one of the day finished. Pretty good. Pretty good in a timely manner. And now we can move on to bees because I freaking love bees. Uh, oh, I need to get rid of some of this crap in my inventory. Um, yeah, I do. Okay, so let's... Uh, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll show you. I went over here, and just because you guys weren't here, this is basically just a gate on a wooden pipe that just says, if there's items in this inventory, pulse them out. And I have this little symbol of fire because this just goes to a void pipe. Um, so literally, if I want to get rid of anything, I just kind of put it in here, and it's fine. Um, I will keep the stone just for fun. A pulverizer, I guess I'll keep... I guess I'll keep this stuff. Why not? I don't know. Nah, no, I don't need. Um, I'll keep this stuff. Just eh, I won't keep the glass around. And you know what? I have one stack of stone. I'm good. <laughs> it's basically free for me, so you know, it's it's fine. Uh, cool. All right, so let me put this stuff back. I will meet you guys. Well, I mean, you're not going anywhere, right? You're just listening to the video. Ha! Huh. All right, I'll, I'll see you in a second. Okay, well, for my next trick, we are going to, or for our next task, I should say, we're going to solve a problem. Uh, by the way, up here, it looks weird, actually. Uh, I cut down some of the trees up here, so it looks kind of sparse. I definitely liked the way it looked with the trees here, so I might actually just plant some for, for fun, you know. Um, but the bees are sure certainly going pretty well. But we're going to solve a problem, and uh, I'm just going to kind of go around here and see if you guys can sort of figure out what the problem might be. Uh, it may not be obvious to you at first, but after a while you should see that there is a huge problem that I have. And that is too many bees. Too many bees, and not enough of these. APR chests. I don't know why I wasn't using these in the first place. Uh, so you just look at an APRS chest. Look at that. It has tons of room for bees, first of all. Second of all, I have a lot of bees in here that are garbage. Uh, cultivated common hybrid. When would I need that? A meadows common hybrid. When would I need that? A lot of these hybrids are totally useless. I can act actually just toss them. They're easy to get. They're no big deal. Um, unlike, you know, princesses we always keep, but drones, uh, you know, cultivated diligent hybrid, who cares, you know? I got diligent purebreds. That's, that's fine. Anyway, uh, another kind of cool thing with the APRS chests is if you put them next to each other, unlike normal chests, they don't, they don't link up. So, and they're basically treated as items almost, or like kind of machines that just have a normal interface, kind of like a workbench or something. And you notice they take up the exact same room as one block. And they can be broken with a pickaxe, at least in this version of forestry they are. So what we're going to do, though, is we're going we're gonna to have some storage for bees. And I'm going to store them in a way that makes sense, and store them up here where I need them the most, because this is where I go to breed the bees. So basically I've put out uh, some area over here that I think we're going to be using for storing bees, and I have nine APRS chests. Basically how I'm going to have this set up is there are there are actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 branches of bees 
in the normal forestry mod, which is what I have here. I don't have any extra bees added or anything. Um, we can combine four of those branches. So basically we're going to have nine branches of bees. And what I kind of want to do is set it up sort of like, like, uh, like, like this. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have basically on a wall, I'm going to have an APRS chest. I'm going to have them lined up. So I'm just going to have however many I, I, I can get and sort of uh, kind of set them up this way. And then on the wall, I'm going to have item frames. And I think just three tall of specific bees that are in this chest. So, uh, for example, this one might be forest, forest meadows, uh, or, you know, maybe this is the noble branch, and they'll have a noble, uh, majestic, and imperial. And I'll have a picture of each of these. And then down here is where I'll find noble, majestic, and, and imperial. Now, I might not be able to fit, uh, like a lot of these will maybe have a ton of bees in the chests. Some of these APS chests will just have a few. Uh, that's okay, because I got, you know, plenty of resources and everything, but I should be able to fit them all in nine. Uh, maybe ten is what I'll end up needing. And actually, this is not a bad placement at, as it is. Uh, let me see what's behind here, actually. Because what I want to also build in is, um, behind here, I want to build in some sorting using APRS pipes, because why not, you know? That'd be cool. So, basically, the sorting will be basically one line of pipe literally going right behind these chests. Nice and easy and out of the way. Be really, really quite easy and cool. So I'm going to go ahead and build that. I still am not sure. I'm basically going to turn this area into a room. I'm just going to kind of build. And uh, I'll sort of come back and show you how it looks. Because I don't think you need to see me building that on camera. Right? Right? Probably not. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it, come out, it comes out. We might be doing a little here and there uh, afterwards, but uh, then we'll put in some pipes and have a, have a grand old time. All right, so I'll, um, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, see you in a second. Ta-da, 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 check it out, check it out. Just a little room, not really too much of a big deal, but pretty cool. So I got uh, nine of these in here. I could put a tenth by you know expanding this room a little, but uh, I think it looks pretty cool. It's a little bit off center, but that's uh, I'm fine with that because it actually looks okay. Um, the lighting is pretty cool. I'm using energized glowstone because I actually think it's um, it looks a lot like honey. Yeah, so it kind of reminds me of bees. So let's go ahead and uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the bees that are in this chest over here. And basically every chest will have three, maybe four bees. It uh, might be a little difficult putting them in there, but basically what I have here is one chest. I'm actually going to make this a double wide chest. Uh, this chest right now is a drop off for um, honeycombs. So I'm basically going to label it as such. Ta-da! And then uh, right next to it, basically in the same chest, I'm going to have a drop off for bees as well. So since they're going to be in the same chest, they have to share the same chest. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is... Yeah, uh, i got to be careful. If I break this block, the energized glowstone will just start traveling. So I think... Let me do it this way. There we go. Because, uh, yeah, it, it does that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use an APRS pipe. Yeah. And put it here, and uh, this used to be a wooden pipe, but I was thinking, and I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to actually change it. So that's a wooden pipe now, and um, I'm going to say this will be an alt arc gate. Uh, oh, crap, it's not even an option. All right, so... Um, ah! I don't want to do that. Um, okay, okay, well, let's do it this way. Okay, so APRS pipe, wooden pipe. Now let's right click. Okay, bees, any bees go to the red, and any items go to the blue. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I guess it could be anything go to blue. Yeah, that works. Um, and then bees will go here, and then basically what will happen is all of these will be APRS pipes, because there's chests, there's AP, oh, whoa, whoa. There's APIS chests right there. Uh, same way over, well, actually not for this last guy. This last one's just going to get the rest. Um, so I actually don't need anything for him in terms of an APRS pipe. 
but I will use apiarist pipes for those, and stone will be fine. Okay, there we go. And then I just use the, um, the sorting mechanics of these pipes to send them where I want them to go. Looks like red for all of these. The red side is where I select what bees go where. Um, so basically I'm just going to run the pipe now uh, for all this, and I think what I can do is I'm just going to throw an odd archic gate there. I will make myself a chest. God, I love that. Did not realize I could do that now. And put it here. And then, can I click on that? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, so if there are items in the inventory... Whoop, energy pulsar. Hello, spider. Let me just kill him, because he could be dangerous soon enough. There you go. There you go. Um... Just as well. Okay, so I'm going to actually set that up, and what I'm going to do is make it so that, oh, you know, we can put extra glowstone there or something, but we'll do that later. So I'm going to put over here uh, just a random bee, eh, maybe a forest drone. Yeah, he's a crappy one. So let's put a crappy forest drone. Um, there you go. Okay, so just bees over here as well as items. Bees and items go in this chest, and they get to get and they go to get sorted. Uh, the bees will go over here and get sorted over here, and the other guys will, the items will go down where they should go. Okay, that's a pretty easy way of doing it. Uh, okay, let me uh, let me get this sorting out, uh, getting going down there. I'm gonna probably label these to the best of my ability currently, and that'll be that. So I'll be uh, right back. Well, would you look at that? Um, that's actually not much in terms of what I have, but this is kind of the setup. Uh, forest and meadows, um, common cultivated in this first chest. It'll be the noble branch in this one with um, noble, majestic, imperial. Uh, this will be diligent, unweary, and industrious. It'll be the modest to austere. Uh, I think this will be the Sinister Branch, this will be a Tropical, this will be Wintry, this will be Marshy, and etc. It'll be a few others that I, for some reason, can't get now, because I think I haven't bred them yet. So even though I found them, I haven't bred them. Yet at the same time, for some reason, I can't get any Heroic Bees, or anything from the Heroic Branch, like Steadfast, or Valiant, or others. So for now, they'll just be in here. Um, so let me go ahead and, uh, and sort these guys. So this forest drone is, is awful. He's, he, he's, he's no good. But let's, let's actually just put him in there and see what happens. Okay, so he should go into, uh, into here. And he does! Cool! Alright, well, that, that seems to work. Um, let's pick a good one. Uh, none of these are good. Alright, let's pick a Meadows Cultivated hybrid and see where that goes. It should go into that same first chest. Um, let's pick a noble. Some of these are kind of crappy. I might get rid of them. But uh, let's pick, uh, yeah, let's just pick a noble and see where he goes, just to make sure he's going in the right place. And let's go down here and pick some various other ones. Uh, diligent, why not? And let's see. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hey, a marshy princess. Cool. Marshy Princess. Um, God, Meadows. Let's just put all 64. Let's see what happens when I put all 60. Oh, well, actually, I know what's going to happen. Uh, they should stack. Okay, I'm not going to stack them that much. All right, so let's uh, let's see what happens. All right, so this, this is hopefully stacking these drones. There they go. They're stacking. Okay, good. Um, I didn't... Oh, I, I should have put a Noble in there. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if I put any diligent in there. Why isn't this working? Did they fall all the way to the edge? What happened to these bees? What happened to you bees? Hmm. Hold on. Uh, okay. Kind of wondering what happened to all these bees. Let me a second. Just want to make sure they didn't fall out or something. Oh, they did. Huh. 
Maybe the pipe held too many? It could be where the pipe held too many. All right, so let's uh, let's try this again. Okay, oh, oh, there might be a backpack now. Crap. Uh, I want that one out. Let's pick a marshy guy. Uh, let's pick a tropical guy. Um, well, crap. Oh, I think I put a wintry in there, maybe. Um... Let's put let's put these modest in there. Okay. Wintry. All right, so let's go see what happens. Now I should uh, end up getting some guy go in here eventually. Are they going too fast? Oh, they might be going too fast. All right, the sorting may not work. Yeah, this sorting is probably not actually going to work because apparently the bees travel too fast and they just get but uh, spit right out. Let me, uh, let's go into a creative world and see what's going on here. All right, uh, give me a second. Okay, guys, I totally figured it out. I'm an idiot. Um, let's go back here. I figured out what the issue was. So if you look at these pipes, okay, here's the first one. By the way, this is how I'm doing uh, the one that needs four. Red is going straight in, but black, as you see, is going down, so I'm doing forest, meadows, common, and cultivated. The problem is, what if there's no other type of, if there's another type of bee that's here? There's no exit. There needs to be an exit, so yellow is the way that say anything. Uh, same here. Okay, it's actually important to say not any bees, because any bees, I believe, um, well, we'll do some experiments maybe, but any bees and you get, uh, yeah. And you might not get, okay, so anything just going there. This is red is anything, red is anything, red is anything, and that's it. Okay, so that should, that should actually work now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a moron. Uh, let me go back in here in my little hidey hole and get out some bees. So we'll just put like a marshy princess here. Um, I don't know, the diligent guy, the marshy drone. We'll put the marshy princess back. We're just gonna do drones right now. Um, uh, what, tropical drone? And let's do a wintry drone. Wintry drone, where are you? Hey, don't I have any? Oh, there they are. Okay. Uh, oh, and a modest drone. Okay, cool. So this should all work just fine, actually. That was my problem. Okay, yeah, it wasn't like that the bees were going too fast through there. They're going just fine, actually. So there they go. Um, I should get... I don't know if I put a noble in there, but I put... Yeah, there is one. There's my modest. There's my wintry. There's my tropical. And there's my marshy. Okay, now it's working. And then others will be there. Uh, for now. It's weird that I can't have ender selected. Like, I cannot select an ender bee, even though I have ender bees. I found them. But maybe it's because I haven't bred one. That might be it. Or I haven't uh, analyzed one with the bee elizer. Maybe that's the case. But anyways, um, this might be all we have time for today. As you can see, this is really nicely lit. Uh, if I push F7, it uh, clearly indicates that I have the whole place lit up inside. Which is cool. But, uh... Of course, outside I don't. Anyway, um, we can see what we got here. Ooh, just looking, maybe I got some purebred something other. Wow, pollen, okay, cool. I think I'm getting some industrious and imp ooh, imperial. Well, now I have to see whether he's a purebred. I'm just really, really, nope. Oh, well, that's okay, though. Uh, so that's that's cool. Uh, ooh, ooh, imp purebred industrious? <gasps> no. <laughs> Nope. No Ooh, Imperial Princess. Oh, please, for the love, for all that is holy. Yes! Purebred. Well, kind of. I mean, mostly purebred. Um, and, oh, sweet. We're, we're getting, we're getting pretty good. Let's see this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. All right, cool. So we're gonna, um, this is great. This is great. We're starting a new... A new regime here. All right, I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be. Wow, so many of these guys. Please be. Please be pure. Uh, species pure. Yay! Even though he's short and normal, it's no big deal. We'll, we'll get him in a second. So, anyways, it's really actually kind of hard to tell these guys apart. Um, there is one thing to do before we leave. Uh, I know this episode's running probably a bit long. 
Um, and that is to just see something here. I'm actually anxious to see this. I'm going to set up a little experiment. I will be right back. Okay, we're doing another little test here. And that is, notice how I have all these cultivated princesses, which is really cool. Um, and they're supposed to be purebred. However, if we, uh, we look at these two, let's look at them in our B Elizer and see. Uh, so let's look at this one first. Looks to be actually cultivated. All the traits here match all the traits here. That means it's a purebred cultivated. Uh, and it looks to be purebred, in fact. This one, it's purebred for species, lifespan, speed, but as you notice, the pollination trait, it's different. This is actually not a purebred bee, as I would call it, but the apiarist pipe thought so. So I'm wondering whether it's because this bee was going through the apiarist pipes in a not analyzed state, whether it makes a difference. So here's a bee that is not yet analyzed, and which is that one? Darn it. I forgot which is which is the bee. Hey, which one is the bee that is? Okay, so this is the one that is analyzed and not purebred. All right, so we'll do that. Okay. All right, let me turn this that way. Let's put an APRS pipe there. A uh, real simple, simple, simple setup. Let's put it here and here, and we'll say um, purebred go. Purebred bees go to the red. Um, anything else go green. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. So this is the one that is identified and it, think, it thought it was purebred before and now it is analyzed and I, I think it's not purebred. Uh, oh, the pipe thinks it is still pure. Ah, oh, crap. I still have the APR's backpack. Um, okay, so that's not... Toss that over there for a second. Actually here, wait. Toss it way over there. Um, so this is the identified, but not purebred. Okay, right here. Okay, it seems to be every single time. Huh, that's interesting. So I guess the APRS pipe doesn't really, it's kind of limited in what it can actually tell is purebred in fact. Well, that's that's interesting. Uh, what about the one that's not analyzed yet? Let's see. This one should also go purebred every single time, I would imagine. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I guess that's it. What happens when we change this to any bees? Ah, uh, come on. Okay. Still says purebred. Still says purebred. Still says purebred. What if this is any bees that are cultivated and cultivated? Aha, now it's starting to come out there. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, starting to come out. Is it going to do it every single time? Oh, it is. Okay. So I wonder, this one is... Let's see. This is the one that is not purebred. Come on, come on. Ugh, okay, he comes out there. So that's interesting. And then this is the one, I think, that is actually purebred. Okay, let's see where he comes out. Oh, please come out the purebred one. Nope, okay, weird. Weird, weird, weird. Uh, let's find out what that one that is unknown is. He's not purebred. Huh. Okay, well, weird. This is a weird oddity of the forestry mod, apparently, and the apiarist pipes kind of don't select purebred accurately. Interesting. Uh, that's kind of uh, going to throw a wrench in this, but uh, that's okay. I still have plans for how to turn this into a NEB maker, essentially, essentially um, using a similar type of principle that I talked about in a previous episode, a uh, little bit different than how it's working right now, but kind of the same principles. So we're going to redo that in a future episode eventually. But uh, as for now, that's really all the time we have for today. Uh, so we actually did a lot of little base remodeling here. Uh, not everything to do with bees, just uh, significantly to do with bees. And I think we're pretty long right now. So 
Uh, I do kind of apologize for not having such regular updates. I never really have ever had regular updates, and it's very difficult for me to do so, but really haven't been able to get the time to record recently because, like I said, we have been moving, and that's exactly why I am Minecraft Steve right now and not Chemdork in my little Mega Man outfit. Anyways, my Mega Man skin. But this is pretty cool. I like it a lot, and... Um, I think we did a good job today. Now I just have to get to organizing all my bees and tossing the ones that are crap, like these hybrids. I don't really need them at all. So I'll toss all those and uh, keep the good ones. All right. Uh, I'll probably make a disposal location like over here or something. Anyway, uh, see you in the next episode, guys, and take care. Bye-bye now.